Mand in the Quran means that you have to extend a certain letter longer than usual. So the length of different types of mad in the Quran will range from two harakat or counts, which is around one second, to six harakat or counts, which is about three seconds. But does that mean that you have to hold a stopwatch while reciting the Quran to get it right? Well, of course not. So how can we then estimate the time of mad properly while reciting the Quran? There is a much easier way that you can use to estimate the length of med correctly every time without using any tools at all. And in order to learn this skill, let us try and understand the measurement unit of med. And before you proceed, you must be familiar with the types of med and the rules of application of med in the Quran so that you can make the best out of this lesson. So if you want to improve your understanding of med, then I highly recommend that before proceeding with this lesson, that you check out this lesson if you are a beginner, or these lessons if you are an intermediate learner. So when we have a med in the Quran, we say that this med is two harakat, four, five, or even six harakat. So the word harakat is the measurement unit of med, and it is the plural of a noun haraka. Haraka in Arabic literally means a movement, but in terms of tajweed, it refers to the time needed to pronounce one short vowel. So a haraka is one fatha, one dhamma, or one kasra. So in other words, it is the time you spend to pronounce ba, bu, bi. That duration of time is one haraka. And since you take about the same time to say ba, bu, bi, we gave them all the same name, which is haraka. So the type of med in this word here is a connected med, which means that it has to be extended for five harakat, or in other words, it should be extended for the same amount of time as five times fatha. But how can we properly estimate the time for one single fatha? Well, the best way to estimate your med is to link the time you take to say one harakah to something you're familiar with, you always have it, and is countable. In other words, you will link between the time you take to pronounce ba, for example, with grasping or releasing your finger. To get a rough estimation on how fast you should grasp or release your finger. So in order to understand this better, I will show you my estimation for one haraka, so that you can see how it's done, and then you can apply the same method yourself. So we say, ba, bu, bi. Just make sure that you train this movement often enough so that you can tell how fast or slow you should grasp or release your finger, since this movement that you're training now will become your own measurement unit. So try to do it in a way that corresponds to the movement of your hand, and try not to make it too fast or too slow. And once you get that link between your finger movement and pronouncing one haraka, then you have successfully created your own estimation of a single haraka which means you have established your own measurement unit for med. And now you can simply employ this movement to count med as you recite the Qur'an, so that you can easily count 2, 4, 5, or 6 harakat, like in this example. أو كصيب من السماء فيه ظلمات ورعد وبرق ورعد وبرق يجعلون أصابعهم في آذانهم من الصواعق حذر الموت 
وَاللَّهُ مُحِيطٌ بِالْكَافِرِينَ So this mad here of five harakat will mean five grasps or releases of your fingers. And here will be four, and so on. Now let's have a look at these two examples to understand this even better. When you compare these two words to each other, you will realize that the first word ends with a short vowel, which means it is one single haraka, and the second word ends with an alif, which is a natural med or med tabi'i, which is two harakat, which means that this alif should be twice as long as the short vowel, since the first one is one haraka and the second word ends with two harakat. So you would say, قَالَ يَا آدَمُ أَنْبِئْهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا So the med in this word should be twice as long as in that word. قَالَ against قَالَ and understanding this concept is particularly important because it can change the meaning if you don't pronounce it correctly. And here I gotta say something very important, which is that the length of med is not absolute, but rather it is relative. In other words, the duration of a single haraka depends on two factors. Number one, it depends on the person. Since someone could grasp or release their finger a little bit faster or slower than someone else. But these should be very minor and slight differences and should not have significant effect on the length of the med. Number two, it depends on which style of recitation you are using. So, are you performing hadr, tahqiq, tadwir, and so on? And we talked extensively about different speeds of recitations in a separate lesson. So check it out if you want to understand that concept completely. Having said that, how long a med of five harakat should take can change depending on who's reciting and on how fast or how slow you are reciting. And that's what we mean by saying that the duration of med is not absolute. So, taking this word as an example, the fatha on the se here is one haraka. When we say se, and the med of alif in the same word should be five harakat. So, the proportion here is one to five as it should be. This proportion should remain the same at all times, regardless of the speed of your recitation. So, this means if you pronounce the fatha faster or shorter, then the med of five harakat in the same word will always sound faster or shorter because you're keeping the one to five ratio and because the med is five times the short vowel. Let's have a look at these two examples to understand this concept completely. I'll pronounce these two ayahs at two different speeds while keeping the proportion between the different med. فَلَمَّا أَنْبَأَهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا now this was a recitation at an average speed, but if you speed it up, the proportion between the different med should remain the same, like so. فَلَمَّا أَنْبَأَهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ And the second example. قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا That's why it is not good practice to radically change speeds in a single recitation, since it will disturb this proportion and can lead to mispronunciation. 
So in a nutshell, mad in the Quran is measured by harakat. Each haraka is the time you take to pronounce a short vowel, fatha, dhamma, or kasra. When you manage to link a single haraka to a hand movement, it will make it possible to estimate the med quite accurately every time. Just remember that med can slightly be different depending on who's reciting and the speed of your recitation. So the most important thing to put in mind is to keep the length of med proportionate and consistent throughout your recitation. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something new today. If you did, please like and share the video for other people to learn from it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.